sun poisoning, sun allergy, polymorphous light eruption. These are only a few names for a subgroup of dermatologic conditions, making it almost impossible to go out and enjoy the sun. I personally suffered from a mild form during my teens and 20s, and I can tell you it was not fun at all. Every year when I was first exposed to the sun for a longer period of time, like going on holiday or something like that, basically exposed skin that had been protected before through wearing a turtleneck or long sleeves. Most of the time my neck and décolleté, sometimes even my upper arms and legs, they were covered in a red rash, itching and, worst of all, burning. But what's the reason behind that? What can you do to treat it or even better prevent it? That's what I want to talk about today. Hi, I'm Dr. Anne. I'm a medical doctor with a passion for skincare that works. On this channel, we explore the science behind skin and do quick reviews so you learn to pick exactly those products that work for your individual skin concern. So if this is something you're interested in, please consider subscribing and ring the notification bell. As I mentioned, there is a whole bunch of skin conditions that are grouped under the term sun allergy. But before I go into a little more detail on that, I wanted to encourage you not to self-diagnose any skin lesions that appear for the first time or repeatedly. Several autoimmune diseases or even skin cancer can manifest with a similar appearance, so make sure to consult a professional and this is not on the internet, this is not a consultation, but in person. With that being said, let's talk about the different kinds of sun allergy. I can of course only scratch the surface here, but the three main forms I want to go into detail today are sun urticaria, more severe but rare, around 1.5 of the population affected, polymorphous light eruption or PMLE, different kinds of severity, around 20% of the population affected, and acne estivalis or sun acne, a condition looking like acne but triggered by UV exposure. Women in general are more likely to be affected than men, young people more than older people and it's more common in lighter skin types but also possible on melanated skin. Most common places for manifestation are the neck and decolleté, less common are the upper arms and legs, and in children it sometimes occurs even on the face. It usually occurs on skin that is usually covered and not exposed to UV rays, like if you've been wearing turtlenecks all winter or long sleeves. As the name polymorphous describes, the appearance can differ greatly in between individuals, but one person always develops the same kind of reaction. So my PMLE might look different to yours, but it will always manifest the same way in me as an individual. One of the triggers that the different forms have in common is UVA exposure, but in some people UVB or even visible light can cause the reaction. So let's talk about sun urticaria first. Sun urticaria is an immediate reaction of the sun towards UV exposure. The minute you go out, your skin starts to redden, rashes and bumps appear, and the skin starts to itch and burn. It's often but not always accompanied by general symptoms, flu-like symptoms, as a sign of general inflammation that takes place. The reasons are not fully understood yet, but as the skin reaction is histologically an allergic reaction, it seems that some people have a protein in their skin that, when activated by UVA rays, is treated like an antigen from your body, meaning it's considered foreign and needs to be attacked. In very severe conditions, that can lead to anaphylactic shocks, which might be one of the sources for vampire stories dying from sun exposure, you know, the whole thing. Luckily, very few people suffer from that kind in that severity. Much more common is polymorphous light eruption or PMLE. While it looks similar to sun urticaria, it's a delayed contact dermatitis, meaning that it doesn't appear immediately with sun exposure, but with a delay of usually 30 minutes up to several hours. The main, and in many cases the only culprit, is again UVA exposure. Again, probably by activating protein in our skin, which then acts as antigen for a delayed type skin sensitivity. Other reasons can be different fragrant components or emulsifiers present in your skincare or sunscreen, some chemical filters, mostly the older ones, or medication that you take. Again, it's believed that the UVA rays that have the ability to penetrate deeper into the skin react there with degradation components of these substances and maybe also or exclusively with the skin protein to trigger that skin sensitivity. 
The puzzling component with that skin condition is that usually UV rays reduce the immune reaction in the skin rather than cause an allergic reaction, a small detail that seems to be different in people that suffer from PMLE. As a fun fact, people that suffer from PMLE tend to have less skin cancer than people that don't. Maybe because their immune response is heightened or maybe simply because they avoid the sun exposure better than others, because it really is not fun. What exactly triggers PMLE in you personally needs to be identified in order to properly avoid exposure. For me, it was solely UVA rays, uh, because back then I would of course either not use sunscreen at all, or would use such a low protection factor that there was probably no UVA protection at all. PMLE often appears in the spring and early summer and then disappears for the rest of the year, which led to the theory that the responsible protein gets depleted by regular exposure and needs time to be rebuilt in the skin, which then happens during the winter months. Sounds logical, but as long as we don't know the protein, there is no way to prove or disprove this theory. A common subgroup of PMLE is acne estivalis, or sun acne, in Germany we call it Mallorca acne. Other than regular PMLE that manifests as a rash and small bumps, this form looks like acne, with pustules and papules, but, big difference, without any comedones, closed or open ones. Other than acne, it's also very itchy, so it should be easy to distinguish between real acne and sun acne. This form is mainly caused by a reaction between UVA rays and lipids, either from your own skin, as in your own sebum, or from lipids in your skincare products. The lipids are oxidized and turned into lipid peroxides, which then cause inflammation in the hair follicle, leading to acne-like lesions. Now we have learned about the different kinds, what can we do to treat them? While the majority of cases is not dangerous, as in life-threatening, the effects on your daily life still can be immense, with many people reporting reduced quality of life and anxiety regarding outdoor activities. So let's look at ways to treat the rash. The first step after the rash occurs should, of course, be complete sun avoidance. It's important to note that UVA rays penetrate windows, so going indoors sometimes won't be enough. While oral antihistamines or steroids will reduce the itching and rash, they should be reserved to more severe cases. Topical application of cooling lotions or antihistamine lotions should usually help lessen the symptoms. Much better than treatment, though, is usually prevention. So how do you prevent PMLE? As UVA seems to be a common trigger for all forms, using a broad spectrum sunscreen, read a sunscreen with good UVA protection is very helpful. For me that alone was enough, but it of course depends on the severity and your individual triggers. If emulsifiers or fragrance is a trigger, you should of course avoid these by not reaching for milks and lotions that usually contain more emulsifiers than creams, and of course opt for non-fragrant products. Should you live in the US and only have access to US sunscreens, switching to inorganic or mineral or physical filters might work, as the older chemical filters have a higher risk risk of triggering allergic reactions. For those with acne-like lesions, avoid extra lipids in your products and reach for gels rather than creams. As the triggers are different from person to person, I can sadly not give you a list of products to try that are guaranteed to work, but my general recommendation would be to look for products that claim to be developed to treat sun allergy and then double check the ingredient list. We all know by now that what is written on the label is not always warranted by what is inside. Much more effective than sunscreen is of course sun avoidance, wearing sun protective clothing, wearing a hat and only gradually exposing yourself to UV rays, slowly increasing the intensity rather than going from turtleneck to bikini within a few hours. Your dermatologist might offer you a skin hardening, which is slow and gradual UV exposure under controlled circumstances, reducing the risk of sensitivity and you might want to get your vitamin D levels checked, as a vitamin D deficiency can increase the likelihood of PMLE. It goes without question, though, that I do not recommend blindly taking high doses of vitamin D supplements, something you can sometimes see on YouTube in How I Cured My Whatever Naturally. Vitamin D gets stored when taken orally, so while it's rare, you can overdose. Topical vitamin D application has also shown promising results, but so far we do not have enough data to really recommend it as prophylaxis. I just wanted to mention it in case you want to give it 
try. And that's a quick overview over sun allergy or polymorphous light eruptions. Please tell me in the comments below if you suffer from it and share what has helped you in prevention and treatment. I'm going to link to more videos on the screen that I think you might enjoy and I'm going to see you all very soon with another one. Bye!